Popscooper, livingcooper.com. Liquid Pops guy. Today I got a coupe simple review for you of the Lodge Sportsman Cast Iron Hibachi Grill. These things are on about 85, 86 bucks on Amazon and Walmart, but I got a deal. We were at a Walmart in, I think, Arkansas, somewhere. Little Rock, Arkansas. And always check the clearance aisles. Paid $64 on clearance at Walmart. So we're going to open this thing up and put it together, check it out, review it for you guys. So keep watching. Let's check it out. You open the box. On the, on the top, it's got assembly instructions on how this thing goes together. Pretty nice. All right, so when you open the lid, it's got this little book in it. This is the Lodge American Made since 1896. Catalog number 33. Shows all these different types of Lodge accessories and different things made by Lodge. Pretty nice to have. And then it comes with a quality assurance checklist of inventory for the box. So let's see what we got. Got the wire handle. This is the fire door. There's the fire door. And then this is the draft door. So here's the fire door. And here is the draft door. In case you were warning, it says right on there. Here's the little leg stand. Of course, cast, uh, cast iron made by Lodge. They always make good products. Screws, washers, and nuts. I guess to attach the base to the, to the sportsman grill itself. Here's the sportsman grill. Frame, I guess, if you will. They call it, I think, a fire bowl or something. And then this is the fire grate that goes on the bottom. And this is the grill grate that goes on the top. It will sit on here like so. So let's see about putting this thing together. Okay, so it says to attach the fire bowl to the base using the nuts and bolts provided. So we'll put those in. Inside the fire bowl, you can see right here. You can see right here, there is a counter soft screw hole and then in the base there are corresponding holes. This front side goes on the front side of the fire bowl like this. So there's the front side of the fire bowl where the doors will go. And then we'll take these screws or bolts. Alright so we'll put these screws in. It says not to over tighten them so I'll just put those two screws in first. Kind of hold it together a little bit. And we'll put on our Nuts and lock washers, lock washers and nuts. And we'll just kind of finger tighten them up, it looks like. I don't want to get them too tight. And then we'll just use our handy dandy Swiss Army knife. Snug those down. Just got them snugged up there real good. And then next up, it says to put the fire bell. This is the fire bell or handle through the holes on either side of the front bowl. So, there you go, there's the handle. Next up is slide on the draft door. So here's the draft door. And it slides right in here, just like so. And then the last step is the fire door. The fire door goes right here. There are grates. This grate goes inside the bottom. That's where your charcoal sits on top. And it says this side up, so you'll know which side goes up. And then last but not least is your grill grate, right there. Now you can also buy accessories for these. You can buy grill tops and things like that. So, but we don't have any of those. So we got this thing together. Keep watching, and we're gonna cook up some food on it. Okay, y'all. So y'all seen me unbox the Lodge Sportsman Charcoal Grill, and a couple things before we use it. We're supposed to obviously assemble it, which we did. And then you're supposed to rinse everything and dry everything real good with just water, nothing else, just water. In order to use it, you want to, you can start it a couple of ways. You can, you can take the grate off and put your charcoal directly in here and light it in here and let it cook. Or you can use a chimney starter. That's what I do, is I'll use the chimney. So I'll take my chimney, I'll fill it with my charcoal, I'm, using, I'm just using, happen to be using this Kingsford, but you could use love charcoal, you could use uh, regular charcoal briquettes in here, so you'll light those things up and bring them up to, I guess, temperature, if you will, before you start cooking. And you can adjust the draft, so it'll adjust the heat by sliding the draft door, 
either way. And you could also tend to the fire if you need to have more coals or whatever you need to do through the little fire access door. What you'll do is right before you start cooking, you'll take say some paper towel or a swabbing mop or whatever and cook this with some oil. Canola, vegetable, olive oil, we'll probably use olive oil. We usually use olive oil. And then you'll you know choose how you want it. There's two settings. There's obviously this setting up high. And then you can also take this and flip it over this way and use it on the low setting, straight down on the grill. Straight down on the grill there. So once you've finished using it, you clean it, clean it. Basically what you want to do is take the grill, wash it off real good. They said you want to use a nylon bristle brush or a nylon scraper, no metal tools, no metal scrubbies or anything like that. Only, only nylon or plastic and scrape it all off real good. You can wash it with a mild detergent. They say just rinse it. We've always done our Dutch ovens by putting soapy water in them and, and letting them cook and then scrubbing them out real good and then coming back and coating them with some oil. And so that's probably how we'll wind up doing this. Once all your ashes and everything's cooled, you'll take those out and then just kind of rinse out the, the grill itself. And that'll just make it last longer and without as much rust, with minimal rust, because it is cast iron, so eventually it will rust. You can look up on our website how to go about re-seasoning the Sportsman Grill if, if you need to. All right, so we're gonna take this right now and we're gonna go rinse it off and then we're gonna start our coals cooking. While our coals are warming up, we'll prep our steaks, get our steaks ready to go, and then we'll come back and we'll be grilling. Keep watching. Okay, y'all. Found something I don't like already on this thing. This little door right here does not stay closed. It does this constantly, and that that irritates me. And it didn't come with like a little latching mechanism or anything. I'm gonna have to see if I can come up with some kind of latching mechanism. And then I thought about something else. So I got my little work sidekick plastic table here. This is cast iron. This whole thing is probably gonna get hot. So I need to set it on something. So what I'm gonna do is. We'll set this down here before we start our fire. And I'm just gonna take a piece of plywood and a couple of tiles and lay them on here, like so. And then we'll put our grill back on here. Take off the, the grill top there. We got our chimney, we're gonna stick it here. I didn't have any newspaper. If you got newspaper, that's ideal. I didn't have a newspaper, so we're just gonna take some paper towel, shove them up in here, like so. And then we'll load up our charcoal chimney, take a little lighter, we'll light it up and let it start cooking. So while the charcoal is getting ready, we're going to go inside and get our stuff ready to grill, and we'll be back. Okay, y'all, we are ready. Charcoal is ready, it looks like. So we're going to pour it in, and uh, hopefully that's enough. Trying to add some charcoal to it. Set that down, let's close up a little bit. On our, our grill top. We've got some wool in here, so we're gonna coat the top here with some wool. And uh, let's see, we gotta let this thing preheat for about 10 minutes, it says, before we start cooking on it. Coat that with some oil, and we'll let this thing preheat for about 10 minutes, and then we will start cooking. Okay, y'all, it's been 10 minutes. We've preheated the, the grill. We're gonna put our, put our steaks on here. The steaks are just a simple Tony Sasseries and olive oil. That's what we put on our steaks. That's what Nana puts on them. I don't hardly ever cook, just for the video. I'm so, enjoying it too. So we got a couple of strips that we're gonna put on here. 10 minutes on each side. And after about five minutes, we're gonna turn them. And this is the maiden voyage on our grill. So we're gonna see how this works out. Now, with that, Nana found a recipe for radish chips basically so we're gonna try to cook those on the grill with our little lodge skillet so we got to let the lodge skillet heat up a little bit so we'll start that out with putting some butter in I don't know about it that's about a teaspoon of butter and let that warm up all right so now we need to it's been about five minutes so we need to turn our steaks all right there's five minutes we we'll turn them and we'll flip them over here in about five more minutes got our butter melted all right, so we just got a couple of radishes, Nana cut up, some purple onion, and with a little bit of garlic. So we're just going to put these in here and the test drive. It's supposed to be kind of like cooking potatoes, sauteing potatoes, keto friendly. I hope this is hot enough. Okay, let's turn these steaks over and do 10 minutes on the other side. And 
going to take the radishes. I don't know if they're done or not. They're just supposed to be cooked like sauteed potatoes. Our steaks are about done. I think I'm going to add a couple more coals into the front of this thing. Just open your little fire door. Toss the coals in there. So why do you have the little slider thing a little bit of uh, it controls how fast they burn. So the more open you have it, the more air is getting in there. And the faster and the hotter it'll burn. We're going to cook up some burger patties. There you go. There's uh, one steak down. Okay, it looks like our steaks are done. They look more like flat iron steaks than grilled steaks, but I guess it is what it is. I don't like shoe leather, so hopefully they ain't going to be tough. It's supposed to be New York strips, so they shouldn't be tough. up so the coals will burn out a little faster. These doors a chance to cool off some so we can clean them. The same way with the grill. As suspected, yeah, that thing is hot, hot, hot. If we would have left that straight on that plastic table, it would have melted right through it. Make this go a little faster. I'm going to go ahead and pull all these coals out. Okay, y'all, there you have it. The lodge grill is cooling off now. We're gonna go clean it up. Keep watching, let's clean it up and then we'll wrap this baby up. All right, first thing I'm gonna do is just kind of brush this stuff off, this ash and stuff. I don't wanna take it in the house. Using a nylon bristle brush. It's got some brass bristles and a little scraper on the other end, but that's what they said, nylon, nylon bristle brush. Well, that's what we're using. And really, that came pretty clean. There's a little bit of stuff on it around the logo. Just by scraping it, it came pretty clean. So they got all over me. All right, we're gonna take these pieces in and clean them up just with some hot water and this brush. All right, y'all, I got it cleaned up for the most part. Now I'm just drying it off here. It's not good to leave your cast iron wet. We're drying it off. Looks pretty good. Well, I guess I should say another thing I really don't like is that because this is not one solid casting, it's two pieces, water gets stuck up under the under the rim there. So, okay, let's put it back together. Draft door goes in there. The fire door. The only thing, this is the, the fire grate, and this is the only piece that looks like it might need to be reseasoned after it's had the heat of coals on it might need to be reseasoned I don't know and then here's the grill clean it off best we can just we actually used a mild soap we used on so now we just got to wipe it down with some oil so now that I put it back together let me take it apart again which good thing is it comes, it comes apart easy so we're gonna mop this down with some vegetable oil kind of helps keep the surface from rusting Now our Dutch ovens, I usually store those like with a t-shirt wrapped around them and t-shirt, little t-shirt between the, the lid and the bowl of the Dutch oven to help prevent any rust from spreading. So I imagine that we will wind up doing that with this, storing it in the same manner. I might even, when I build my little permanent table, I might even build a top to go on it so that it kind of sits all in one piece. I haven't decided yet, you have to keep your eye out for that video. It's not good to leave the ashes and stuff in these things because those ashes will get acidic and they'll start eating the metal and making it rust and everything else. So make sure you clean out the bowl real good and don't leave any ashes in it. Really, I don't even think the outside needs to be coated since we didn't really do much to it other than it's got heated up. So. There you go, y'all. Bob's Cooper, livingcooper.com, with a Coop Simple review of the Lodge Sportsman Grill, Charcoal Grill. 
Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Got uh, some information. Hope you guys liked the video. If you like, please give us a thumbs up. Leave us some comments. Some other things you might like to see us review or some, some of your experiences with the Lodge Sportsman Grill or the Dutch Ovens. We love trying out new recipes in the Dutch Ovens. Check out our social medias, Instagram, Twitter, Pinterest, all at Living Cooper. And of course our blog at livingcooper.com. Please uh, share our video, subscribe, hit that notification bell so that you're notified next time that we upload. Check out our other videos. We've got a lot of other types of videos. We'll see you guys later. Keep watching.